here. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the fellows who are part of this program and are graduating today. Um, it's just incredible to see so many young women leaders emerge from here. I have some personal experiences to share why I'm so passionate about just uh, women entrepreneurs and uh, even the reason why I chose to kind of uh, join Kalari, which is driven by Vani, who's uh, uh, an entrepreneur herself in a, and, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, got into venture capital ecosystem. So I really am excited to be here uh, to kind of share what my thoughts are. Um, I see there's, there's just such a depth of talent uh, here and just in the country. And it makes me so excited with what uh, you all are going to achieve out there once you're done with this, right? So um, in general, we talk about a lot about women entrepreneurship and, uh, you know, we cannot really talk about that without speaking about, uh, you know, gender equality, right? So I think that's one of the things which keeps coming back all the time. So unless, uh, you know, the women are empowered uh, economically, I think uh, we cannot really achieve that. So I think the key ability is to kind of support yourself and having the ability to make choices about your life. Um, and to forge your own path. I think that's that's a very critical path, right? So, and um, like most of us think, I don't think entrepreneurship is really more about, uh, you know, it's not really about money. I think uh, that is a driver and a motivation, but I don't think it should be the one. Um, it's really about the creativity, passion, and leadership that you all innately have within yourselves. And, you know, we all have it, right? So, you know, it can be as simple as, you know, everyone is a leader by heart. I feel it's just, it's just figuring out what your skill is and, you know, focusing on that, right? So, um, you know, I know there's so many stories, but I think the stories which really connect well are the people who are not really educated and have become entrepreneurs, right? So, um, you know, quickly, let me share a quick story about, uh, you know, someone like Gunavati Chandrasekhar. And I think uh, uh, she's a 41 year old. I'm not sure how many of you know about her, but uh, she's a person from Tamil Nadu, um, you know, a resident of Sivakasi. And uh, she later at the age of 40 or something discovered her passion, right? So it was more driven by passion and a purpose than anything else. Um, for quilling, right? So she learned that you know, quilling is a beautiful thing and she can do something with it, right? So she had a polio attack when she was very early year old and uh, she got married off at 16. So, you know, people like that can actually uh, think about being an entrepreneur themselves from the go, right? And, you know, they can figure themselves out. So she taught herself how to turn paper scraps into beautiful pieces of art, right? Determined to be completely financially independent and find success, she steadily gained pace and, uh, you know, today she sells quilled artwork, wall, wall art or miniature figurines and jewelry and much more under a brand name called, you know, Gunas Quilling, right? She was invited the, by the British Council to address a gathering about, you know, growing as successful entrepreneurs and she's a part of the Quilling Guild at, uh, at UK uh, with a group of other experts. Quite an exciting story when you look up and think about people like that or uh, think about people like um, Navi Bain, uh, who turned an entrepreneur at 60 year old, uh, 60 years, right? So, um, you know, nothing compared to what you guys uh, are or uh, what where we are at. So um, she hailed from a village called uh, Nagana in the district of uh, Bansakta. Uh, against all the odds, she caused a mini revolution in her district, right? She, she made a record by selling milk worth, you know, 1.14 in uh, 2020. And she made a profit of, uh, you know, almost 3.5 lakhs for herself per month. And it's just amazing to see what you can do with very little what you have, right? And it's just a part of small things where we, we really think that, you know, we need to do something large, but it's, it's just starting that small step and, you know, starting very small and, you know, able to create that impact, right? Today, she has four sons, but no one even is anywhere close to what she is doing in terms of entrepreneurship or building a community or making money, right? Um, it might, uh, you know, sound very small, but she runs a diary of 80 buffaloes, 45 cows, and she's been rated like the number one entrepreneur, right? So, so entrepreneurship is really not really about, you know, a fancy thing. It is not about, you know, you know, creating great uh, things which are really fancy. It's really about, you know, finding something which is innately in you and actually building on top of it, right? But I think it just goes back to the point, right? You know, she has like people working for her. So I think you always get 
uh, one thing I keep telling is, you know, you can uh, uh, you can work for someone, but you only get richer and better and create an impact when you actually have people working for you. That is the major difference between you working versus you know people working for you. You are successful in terms of not just monetary value, but achieving something when you have created employment for five or 10 people. That's also a good start, right? So that is where you know that you're on the right path towards entrepreneurship. So research shows that female entrepreneurs generate more revenue than male counterparts. This might sound very unrealistic, but it is true, obviously, you know, and uh, for every US dollar raised out there, women-owned startups generated 78 cents in revenue, while startups run by men only generated 31 cents. Um, of course, they are led by men. That's another challenge which we are trying to address, right? So, but that is where you know we really don't understand the numbers in terms of how much of an impact you create out there as a woman, right? Um, teams of diverse foundings, founders, meaning people with uh, teams where there's more than one gender who is actually representing, uh, gives us better outcomes. That again, this is all data, right? This is not like something which you know I'm just talking off. So you know you really get. At least from an investor standpoint, we see that we are actually able to gain more returns on the invested capital if we have a diverse uh, board, diverse uh, team out there, which is led by uh, women entrepreneurs, right? So I think it's a great stats. Overall, you know, I think um, it's good news. It's hard to explain with all these things. There's still so many barriers existing for women to kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, overcome these, right? And I think the uh, Economic Forum, uh, Forum um, World Economic Forum itself says that at the current rate to close this gap itself is going to take forever. I don't think there's, um, you know, um, uh, any easy way other than uh, folks like you who are coming out of this ecosystem, just going and actually starting or not thinking anything else, right? That is the only way you can close this gap. I don't think there's any better way than to close the gap, right? So. So, you know, I think uh, the otherwise the improvement is going to be very, very marginal. Uh, I don't think we'll even see anything like that. So, you know, um, so I think uh, what is holding women back, right? I think, uh, you know, what are the challenges they face? You know, I think we still keep talking about, you know, how, um, you know, it's always like, you know, how do we create a level playing field for women entrepreneurs? But I think it's always about, you know, while we look for opportunities, while we think that someone is going to come and you know create this opportunity, it's all about how we actually go out there and create these opportunities, right? And I I know it is much more challenging, it is much more tougher than for a male counterpart to go out there and create this. But I I don't think there are uh, uh, that many glass ceilings in today's world. And uh, when you look at the venture capital distribution, also uh, because you know that the source of finance is a key to enabling any new business startups to grow and scale globally. Only like two and a half percent of the venture capital funding went to startups with women. And if you really turn the statistics, uh, statistics around, it's really thinking about you know how much uh, you know eighty five percent of that venture capital funding went into basically uh, white uh, male founders, right? So that is like really really alarming right so um but i think uh, it's much more challenging in countries with uh, uh, you know um, uh, which uh, which are less developed like uh, you know india and other countries so because the barriers are much more tougher to overcome uh, but i think you know at least i am very proud to say that you know i'm part of a, a, an organization led by a woman vani and the initiatives we take here are just impressive which we have just launched with our program called uh, uh, CXXO, right, which is just uh, a program which we launched just to address this uh, gap, the, you know, just to level the playing field, right, for everyone, right, so that's where we had created this, trying to bring women by creating more female mentorship, creating networking opportunities, evaluating existing female role models you can follow uh, and, uh, you know, help you out, right, so the whole purpose was to build a vibrant community of women leaders to champion the next generation of uh, women CEOs by inclusive growth, which we had set aside like a 10 million fund. We looked at every company out there. We called open invitations. We are talking to people, everyone who's pitching to us, helping them to you know build themselves out, right? So it's pretty much creating that leveling playing field for women, uh, uh, you know, founder CEOs. I think we just the, just the role of women leaders is paramount for a thriving startup ecosystem. That is completely what we believe in and inclusive growth cannot cannot happen without that. 
So, you know, I'm really, really um, happy to, uh, again, you know, uh, just share these thoughts. And, you know, just from an aspect of how we think as entrepreneurs, right, when we are really out of college or, you know, even working somewhere, you know, why, why is it like, you know, we cannot really think that, you know, we are an entrepreneur. You know, we, I think the biggest thing I feel that is, uh, you know, of course, there's 10 other things, but I feel that, uh, you know, we always fear risk. Right. And we always fear failure. I think every one of us do that. It doesn't matter what it is. But I think more from a woman aspect, we always fear failure. Right. So I think the first step towards uh, entrepreneurship is I always believe that every entrepreneur is successful. It doesn't matter. The moment you took that step to start something, you are a success, period. Because you can assume that 98% of the people are not doing that. So obviously, you are already doing it, which means you are successful. So it's not really about you know, whether you've failed or passed or whatever it is, you have succeeded in life and you took that step already. So uh, the outcomes are just not um, uh, the only measure in which you can think about. So I think it's just about getting out there and actually starting something I think is, is a very, very big step. And um, uh, which is, you know, often the biggest challenge which we see, right? And I think most of the times, you know, uh, you know, we see people um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, especially women, I think there's a comfort zone built around, right? So you feel that, okay, fine, you know, I'm, I'm really like stable in this space. I don't want to really, really get out and start challenging myself and all that stuff. So I think key thing is to get out of the comfort zone, right? It is very, very discomforting to get out of the comfort zone, you know, letting go of things which are used to, which, which you are already working with every day, day in, day out, right? So I think those things, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone and saying that it's going to be very, very uncomfortable for me. Every morning I wake up, it's going to be very, very different. I don't feel nice, right? I think uh, it, it just is creating a different path for you. That is why it's very uncomfortable. But believe me, I think that is where you'll see, uh, you know, uh, the path less traveled and you'll see that's where the success comes from. So I think that's very, very important to create that. And um, you know, I think one of the things are, again, you know, uh, it applies to every entrepreneur out there, irrespective of whether it's a woman or a man. Um, I think just the perseverance and, uh, uh, you know, sticking to what you had uh, started with, I think is very, very important. Some people will get very lucky early on and luck does favor uh, in, in this sense, because, you know, um, I can say that luck is also a very small part. Uh, but it is a part, but uh, 98%, 99% is, uh, is just pure uh, passion and perseverance uh, that keeps you going to build what you want to build. Uh, some things can happen very quickly, but uh, some things take time. And uh, believe me, it doesn't matter whether if you have done entrepreneurship for a couple of years, I can guarantee you, you will never go back to working for someone. Doesn't matter whether you get paid, no matter how much you get paid, you will never go back to work for someone because you will realize what people learn in their lifespan you've learned in a couple of years. So that is what you will learn as an entrepreneur. You will learn everything. Uh, an MBA won't teach you that. I can tell you that, you know, everything is theoretical, but here practically you're dealing with people, you're dealing with business plans, you're dealing with uh, ecosystem, you're dealing with capital raises. I mean, you're learning everything in a couple of years. So you are like much, much smarter person in a couple of years. So that's why I feel every entrepreneur out there is very, very successful uh, in their own sense. I don't think they're, they're never failing. They're not at all uh, someone who you cannot look up to as such. So I think it's just, the, you know, overcoming failures and setbacks, roadblocks, you know, these are like very, very part of your journey. And that's what makes it very, very fun and exciting. You know, why do we really get onto a roller coaster, right? Why do we enjoy a roller coaster, right? Because it's beautiful. You know, it's the ups and downs make it very fun, right? If it was just a flat, you would be going in a train. Why do you just go to a theme park and want to enjoy the ups and downs? Because it's thrilling, right? You need to get the Narlan rush in that, right? So which is what an entrepreneurship gives you. And that's exactly what you want to get out there. And um, one of the key things is, I think people underestimate uh, the power of the network that is out there to help you, right? So, you know, some of the times, you know, I don't know this thing. I don't know this person. I don't know how that person did. Believe me, when I started, it was just beautiful. I was like shocked by the kind of uh, network that is out there to help you, right? I mean, you don't need to know anything. I didn't know anything about venture capital. I didn't know anything about fundraising. I didn't know anything about building a pitch. 
doesn't matter as long as you be yourself true to your heart i think everything comes out and you know you really can um, you know be assured that there is enough people to support you to make you big out there and everyone is trying to do that you know in your path so you just need to go out there and look and reach out for that so i think it really really is very important and uh, you know exploiting that network and uh, the key aspect is you know also about you know what kind of a team you can build and you know everyone is a sales person right i think in the world everyone is selling something in fact you know if i'm talking to you i'm selling something okay so um, the point is that today with an idea you can actually build a great team if you can sell that vision of yours that passion of yours to an entrepreneur or to your team members or your colleagues this doesn't require money you can get the best of the people to come work for you if you can actually convince them sell them about your idea and i can see that happening much more today than what it used to be uh, you know 5 10 years back because people believe in actually uh, being a part of the startup ecosystem and actually growing with them so just reach out there connect with everyone out there you know sell your idea sell your thought build a great team and you know technology is not uh, a key problem today you can actually get that done very quickly and simply with a lot of people out there so i think that also is a great aspect for today to think beyond technology so you don't need to worry that can i do this because you know it's all there the tools are there the people are there the technology is there it's very easy to kind of build solutions and um, i think uh, you know these are these are just the some of the things which i feel that are very very core and uh, critical uh, to kind of uh, you know get your passion going get your company going and um, i really feel that uh, you know everyone here uh, all of you guys uh, should not even think anything other than starting something you know it might be very small it might be you know something which uh, doesn't seem like a big large impact but doesn't matter you know believe me it doesn't matter just go out do there do that for a couple of years you will see that you're a different person um uh, in in a couple of years i don't want to bore you with a lot of other things but uh, i just wanted to share these thoughts with you and uh, really again you know um, uh, really thank uh, you guys for actually having me here and um, you know i really wish you all the very best um, in your journey from uh, here onwards and um you know yeah that's uh, that's pretty much